when should I invest? How do I know I'm ready? When should I get started? Okay. So the, the general answer to that is the sooner the better. Yesterday would be perfect. Okay. <laughs> Today is okay. Tomorrow, eh. What is the perfect bite? That mix of flavors, textures, colors, and aromas that come together in one amazing amouge bouge. Big ideas expressed in small bites. That's our podcast, a variety of inspiring topics to make your financial goals and dreams a reality. Brought to you by Clark County Credit Union for your weekly serving of food reviews, financial education, and life hacks that your future self will appreciate. It's the perfect bite of interesting information to start your week. Welcome to episode 65 of The Perfect Bite. I'm Crystal Price. And I'm Shannon Hiller. Let's dig in. We are back from our summer break and we're ready to share more of the new dishes we love here at The Perfect Bite. Today, we're talking about Blueberry Hill. Next, we're talking with our guest from CCCU's Investment Center, Scott Knudsen. And finally, for your future self, we'll share tips on how to get back into the work routine after taking a long vacation. Each week on The Perfect Bite, we'll visit a locally owned Southern Nevada restaurant that we hope will become your new favorite. This week, we're sharing a longtime Vegas staple, Blueberry Hill. They've been family owned and operated since 1966 and currently have four locations in the valley. I went to their main location on South Decatur off of Charleston. Have you ever been there? Do you have any memories of Blueberry Hill? I have. I feel like, gosh, I've lived here over 20 years. We used to go there a lot after like late night hangouts. You just wanted, you know, something. They're open. Are they 24 hours? They're 24 hours. Some of the locations. Yeah. Yeah, Like my memories are the same. It's Mm -hmm. like late night out with friends. And I even remember like even high school, that was like the place to go to like after school Mm -hmm. or on the weekends with dates, like (laughs) your first dates. So, well, because even though Vegas is like 24 hour town in a lot of ways, I mean, a lot of places do actually close yeah so eventually yeah. there's only a handful that are 24 hours and, so and this is off the strip so this is more of the local mm-hmm. joint yeah so i've been and i guess for any of you who have not been to um blueberry hill i would compare it to like an ihop or like mm-hmm. a denny's it's that kind of same feel same vibe we actually went there a couple of times over the summer uh i kind of thought i was going to swear off blueberry hill as like this place from my younger days you but grew up <laughs> yeah, too old for blueberry hill <laughs> <laughs> but um, we were just getting off of having like a lot of family in town and going out to like more modern, I guess, restaurants and things like that. We wanted to kind of mix it up, go to like an IHOP, but not IHOP place. And so um, Blueberry Hill popped into my mind, went there with the family and everyone really enjoyed it. Um, I think one of the nice things about them is like because it is like an IHOP, you have your choice. It's not just all burgers or it's not just all Italian. Like you you get it all pretty much. You can order what you want. So I feel like it's almost like a diner with a really big breakfast yes. menu, right? Like yes. IHOPs, I feel like it's more breakfast with a few non-breakfasts. Yeah. I don't know. A smaller menu. Now. Yeah. I agree. It mm-hmm. is more a big um, breakfast menu. But one of the cool things for Blueberry Hill is they make all their pancakes from scratch. There's no package mix, no artificial ingredients, preservatives, all mm. of that. So it truly is an old-fashioned pancake. Even the vibes, honestly, when you went in there, like the servers and like the hostesses and things, they feel like they're the original gang from... (laughs) I was going to say, I feel like I'm in a movie kind of. Yes. Like when I'm, I don't know, some kind of like, yeah, diner scene (laughs) from a movie. And the music, it's still Mm -hmm. from like the 1960s, 1970s, that kind of sock hop feel takes you back and you just feel good you just it's like a happy place and you're just like looking around on the walls yeah don't swear don't swear it off keep going (laughs) no not at all (laughs) so what did you what did you eat so i ordered i went classic bacon cheeseburger with fries and then um, on my second visit that i went i also ordered the south of the border menu and ordered the beef tacos both of which Mm. were amazing even though, again, neither one is like So you went specialty. twice. I did. I did. <laughs> I'm like, wait. You're telling, I'm back, Blueberry Hill. <laughs> and I'm back. <laughs> For any of you longtime Vegas people out there, try it again. You'll be back too. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, but yeah, super delicious. Big burgers, fresh fries, the south of the border tacos. It tasted like I was going to like a Mexican restaurant. It was very delicious. And it was huge portions My family, you know, we had like our share of different things. So like somebody ordered the club sandwiches. Um, Somebody did the breakfast with the pancakes. We had someone who did the pasta. Everything that you could think of that you could possibly want like a a basic staple item, they had it there. 
Some of the menu items <laughs> that stood out to me, they have like this really old school kind of menu. They had like liver and onions. Have you ever tried that? No, you don't see that too often. You, you don't. On the menu. It is definitely a blast mm-hmm. from the past. I do not have plans to try it, but it was cool to see it. They had a down home Dixie meatlo- meatloaf, excuse me, and a honey coconut chicken, which kind of sounded pretty good. Okay. Maybe I'm going to try yeah. that one. But I think what I'll order next time, the one thing that I didn't order were the pancakes. Uh, they have a pigs in a blanket, and then also they have a, a good dessert menu. When you walk in there, the counter, don't yes, they? Yes, they've got the mm-hmm. counter with the displayed cakes and things. You can go in there, order a full cake, a full pie. Or if you're dining in and you just want to get a scoop of ice cream and a slice of pie, it's only 99 cents extra. So hmm. super good deal. My recommendation is just to go back to Blueberry Hill, honestly. Just <laughs> give um, it a try, people. Check it out again and, and relive those uh, glory days and make some new memories. Well, if you have a recommendation for a restaurant or a dish for us to try here, send us a message at theperfectbite at ccculv.com. We're always open to new ideas. Next up, we have a guest from CCCU's Investment Center joining us to discuss a variety of investment topics. So since it's our 65th episode, we always have a special guest every fifth episode. Today, we're really happy to have Scott Knudsen with us. He has nearly 20 years of experience as a financial advisor, providing holistic financial planning for individuals, families, and small businesses. Scott, welcome to The Perfect Bite. Thank you for having me. (laughs) I think the big question that a lot of people have is, when should I invest? How do I know I'm ready? When should I get started? Okay. So the the general answer to that is the sooner the better. Yesterday would be perfect. Okay. <laughs> Today is okay. Tomorrow, eh. In general, though, what you're going to want to have is a steady income. You should have at least a little bit of money left over after you meet your expenses uh, every month. You should consider the impact of any known life events that are coming up. So if you've got some major expenses coming up that you know are going to drain the investments, that that's not the time to invest. Okay. Um, like a wedding or a wedding, a or baby. If, or... if you know you, you're going to need a new car soon okay. or if you're, you're you're buying a house or okay. something like that, you, you wouldn't want to invest money that you're going to need six months from now. Got it. And then finally, we want to make sure that you've built up uh, an emergency fund so that you've you've got some liquidity outside of your investments. Okay, makes sense for those flat tires or whatever. Flat tires. And my, well, my favorite example, because th- th- this actually happened to me, is if it's July 3rd and your, <laughs> your HVAC <laughs> goes out, your HVAC. Oh, you, no. you're, you're, you know, if your, your air conditioner dies on July 3rd, you, you want to make sure you have some money in the bank to fix that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. <laughs> We've had some members go through that. Las Vegas AC, that's no yeah. joke. There's no joke. Yes, have that <laughs> emergency fund ready. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Scott, well, one thing that I always get like lost in is the different types of investments. Can you share more on that? I can, yes. Um, the two most basic types of investments are equities and fixed income. And equity, and when people hear that word, they usually think of home equity. Mm -hmm. Equity represents a share of ownership in something. So when you buy an equity investment like a share of stock, what you're actually buying is part ownership of a company. If you buy a share of Microsoft, you are a one one hundred millionth owner. Mm-hmm. of Microsoft. Now, that's not going to get you invited to any board meetings, but <laughs> you you still, you're part owner of the company. Mm-hmm. Equities usually have a, a high upside potential, but they're also very volatile, as everybody remembers from 2008 or more recently, 2020. Equity mm-hmm. investments can go off a cliff. You, you can lose a lot of money overnight on, on your equities. The other type of, uh, of investments, fixed income investments, are really just elaborate IOUs. Mm. Fixed income investments are usually things like we think of bonds or or CDs. Oh, got it. What you're doing is you're lending money to some other entity. Could you could be lending it to the government? You could be lending it to like either a federal or the state government. You could be lending it to a bank. You could be lending it to a company. Credit and union. Credit union. <laughs> you could be lending it to a credit union, and they agree to pay you back at a fixed point in the future with a fixed rate of interest. Fixed income investments tend to be less volatile and more certain, but the price you pay for that certainty is a lower upside potential. You're, okay. you're not really going to you're not usually going to knock the cover off the ball buying 
buying fixed income right. investments. And a big part of my job is helping people figure out what mix of those two is going to be right for you. I think also like your age and how long you have mm -hmm. time would be a big factor. I know we've talked about that with our own 401ks, like where should we be putting this money? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Investing, so. yep. A 25 year old is going to invest very differently yeah. than a 75 year old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm more like the 25 year old side. But <laughs> 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 Don't laugh so hard. Crystal, Crystal, yeah. about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the economy is always something that we're talking about and yep. recession. And, you know, we hear a lot of people talking about the Dow or the S and P and like, just what are those? If someone hears that, what does that mean? So when you hear the the Dow Jones Industrial Average or the S&P 500, those are examples of stock indexes. And those are collections of stocks that, that someone chooses. It, like in the case of the S&P, Standard & Poor's has, has chosen them. Mm -hmm. And they choose them to represent a good cross-section of the equity markets. In, in the S&P case, it's the, the U.S. equity markets. And that can kind of give you a good reading on the strength of the, the, that market and, by extension, the strength of, of the economy. So when, when people it's talk a about... snapshot of what's going on based exactly. on those. Okay. Exactly. So when people talk about, you know, the stock market, and I'm, I just made some air quotes around that. When people talk <laughs> about the stock market, they're usually referring to either the S&P 500 or the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Okay. Oh, I feel smarter. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing to help me feel smarter, Scott, uh, what are bull markets or bear markets? Bull markets are, that's an environment where equity prices are generally rising. Mm -hmm. And we just came off one of the, certainly the biggest bull market I've seen in my career, where over 10 years we, we had this rising market environment. And bear markets are an environment where equity prices are generally falling. Hmm. I find that for most investors, it's better not to get too wrapped up in the idea of, is this a bull market? Is this a bear market? The thing that is going to best serve most people is to find a risk-appropriate portfolio with the help of a professional, and then stay invested in that portfolio for the long term. And, and over the long term, it's generally going to work out. I'm trying to think of a way to remember that. <laughs> bulls don't follow, and bears yeah. don't follow the bulls so the actually there's a, a, a this this might just be a legend but the the very first guy that i, I ever worked for in this inter industry back in um, <laughs> <laughs> he said that it all has to do with with how those animals will attack you that bulls generally attack by oh. going up okay they they okay. take their horns and they swing up Whereas a bear is going to attack by towering over you and swiping down. Got it. With his yeah, massive Yeah, I knew paw. there was something in there. <laughs> yeah. Now, again, I can't, I don't know if that's true or not. I just Where's know the, that's We're going to go with it, Scott. Yeah, that's what What's-His-Name told me, <laughs> yeah. and I kind of stuck with it. Thank you, What's-His-Name. I like that. So, Scott, with the Investment Center at CCCU, um, if we want to start investing, how does that work? How do we start working with you? The first step, it's always going to be a quick conversation with either me or with my coordinator, Joanne where we, we just try to figure out your, the very basics of your situation and what kind of help you need. And then once we've determined that, what we're usually going to do is set up a more detailed meeting. That's going to be one-on-one -on -one with me. Or actually, it doesn't have to be one-on-one. -on -one. Spouses, family members, whoever you want to bring. Yeah, that's fine. But we're going we're gonna to talk about your situation in more detail, and that's going to give me the information I need to go back to my planning group, and we'll craft recommendations specifically for you and then we'll have a follow-up meeting where uh, we go over those recommendations if there are investments that you don't initially understand i'm going to explain all of the ins and outs of them for you all of the upsides and the downsides whatever costs there might be uh, I, I have a strict policy nobody gets to leave my office with more questions they had when they came in okay. so and then as, assuming that you take our recommendations and decide to work with us, there's always going to be ongoing monitoring. I, I like to touch base with everybody at least a couple of times a year because, like we discussed earlier, a 25-year-old is going to invest differently than a 75-year-old. Everybody's conditions change over time. So I, I have clients that I've been serving for 20 years, and they're, they're investing now differently than when I first met them. And so the market we, changes. And the market Everything changes. Everything needs change. Yeah. Everything time, changes, yeah. yeah. So those are things that we want to keep up with. So this is not uh, – it's not a one-and-done thing. It's definitely a, a, a relationship. 
So Scott, is there a direct line that someone can call to get in touch with Joanne or you? Yeah, the direct line to the Investment Center is 702-463-8433. And the nice thing about that is when you dial that number, it rings on my desk. If I'm in a meeting, it rings over to Joanne's desk. So there's none of this press one for this, press two for that. It's Excellent. You're, you're going to get a person. Well, Scott, thank you so much for taking some time to join us today. Before you leave, uh, we do ask all of our guests a couple of things. So the first question we have for you is, what is a piece of financial advice that you can give to our listeners that they can implement starting today? I think the number one piece of financial advice I would give that literally applies to everyone, spend less than you make. Simple that's, enough. That is, you're, you're never going to go far Sometimes wrong by doing that. it's a challenge, but yeah. It, it is, <laughs> especially, that been done, but yeah. especially with, you know, 9% inflation. I know it's, uh. I know it's tough, but it's... Yeah. Um, it works long term. Or earn more. Yeah, or earn more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Both sides. Okay, our second question is, what is your favorite locally owned restaurant and what do you order there? What's your favorite thing? My favorite locally owned restaurant is an Italian joint called Casa de Amore. Oh, it's on Tropicana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't have a consistent thing that I order there because I'll go in expecting to order one thing and they'll hit me with a special and, uh, and I'm like, I, I have to get that. Fine, I'll get the Fine, special. I have to get that. <laughs> but it's such a wonderful place. They have a tiki bar in the back. It's it's very old. You'd almost expect the, the Rat Pack to walk in the door okay. at, at any moment. Okay. And what I, what I love most about that place is 10 years ago on my second date with a woman, the waiter there, and he's still there, Tony, the waiter, <laughs> intercepted me on the way to the men's room and, and said, how's it, how's it going? And I said, I, you know, I could use a little help if you could, oh. if you could do anything for me, I, I could use a little help. And while I was in the men's room, he put a good word in for me. And 10 years later, we are still together. Oh my oh. gosh. That's so, so perfect. Tony, yep. thank you. So Tony, Tony helped me with the, with the whole soulmate thing. And I, he, That's awesome. Yeah, he's yeah. he earned his tip that night. And is Tony not the most perfect name for someone in a Oh, it re- and, and restaurant? He's, it, uh, he absolutely is. Yeah. So it's just a fantastic place. I recommend it to anybody. It's on Very Tropicana. Cool. Very good. Well, thank you so much again for joining us, and we'll post a link in our show notes to get more information uh, from your group. Thanks, thank Scott. you so much. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Now we'll take a break to hear from our sponsor. Clark County Credit Union members have received more than $73 million in bonus dividends since 2001 just for using the credit union services they need every day. Since CCCU is owned by our account holders, they earn the dividend, not shareholders. This year, we returned a $2.6 million bonus dividend to members with auto loans, credit cards, and checking accounts. Open an account today and start earning your own bonus dividend. Funds privately insured by American Share Insurance. Next up is our future self segment inspired by the Happiness Project. Getting back into your work routine after a vacation can be tough and dreadful, especially if you have a lot of emails and tasks waiting for you. Yeah, that's yeah. the worst. This is something that me and Shannon, um, our home marketing team, and probably a lot of you out there have experienced. Um, summer's ending. Mm-hmm. We may have taken a week long, a couple weeks long, or even a couple of days. And I know for me, when I came back, Hundreds of emails that <laughs> needed to be responded to. And that was us even trying not to send yes. you emails <laughs> while oh. you were gone. So Yeah, or even me trying to kind of periodically pop in there and take care of some stuff. I still had a lot. Yeah, it's good to take vacation, but you sort of just know the reckoning will be there for you <laughs> when you get back. So you're like, okay, yeah, I can do this. So we have some tips for you. Okay. Now, a Zapier Harris Poll survey found out that 87% of knowledge workers dread various aspects of returning to work after taking a vacation. Of those workers, 37% said that they feared getting back into a routine, and 31% said that they dreaded catching up on admin work. So getting back to work doesn't need to be overwhelming. We have tips that are going to help you become less overwhelmed. The first tip from our article that we pulled from Forbes says to start the day with me time. I definitely try to do this without, you know, this research here. But I remember like um, when I came back from vacation, I was like, I'm going to still get back into my morning routine. I'm going to go for my walk. I'm going to start my day calm and relaxed. I'm not going to go in stressed. And hopefully I'll have a better day. Mm -hmm. So they recognize that. Start with me time. So getting yourself ready for work may seem overwhelming. 
The best way to combat the negative feelings is to start a slow and relaxing morning. I did this by taking a walk. You might want to do this by maybe meditating, getting up early, taking breakfast, things like that. Just kind of slow and steady. Also, you could start your day by stretching um, and then just have a general clear mind that can help you tackle the busy day ahead of work. Start with positive thoughts. Like, mm-hmm. today's going to be a good day. Yeah. I'm happy to this. see my team. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out, inbox. <laughs> I'm coming exactly. for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, the second recommendation is to debrief your team. So get your team involved with helping you ease back into the work week, work day. Gather your team for a quick meeting. This gives you a chance to also see what the priorities are if they've changed, what the work items are that might have been missed in the emails, Um, because I've definitely seen that happen. You know, you're scrolling through trying to delete, delete, delete. Maybe you delete something that was important. So meet with your team, go over priorities, um, and that will help you prioritize your day. And if possible, try to schedule the meeting in the afternoon and block off your morning so that your team knows that you're busy catching up on your work. That morning That's time. a good tip. Very good tip. Next recommendation is to write your goals for the week. So just not the day, but for the whole week. Before you check your emails, list down all of your goals for the week. Even if you're small action items, like checking your email or your calendar or debriefing your team. Add those to the work week goals. The last recommendation is to take your time. Avoid overworking yourself on that first day back. You're, the work's not going anywhere. You're just going to be there again tomorrow. So take your time. Take that first day to tackle the most important aspects of your work. And remember, you don't have to complete every task on your first day back. Give yourself time to both physically and mentally get back into the work week. We want to hear from you. Send us your financial questions or money topics that you'd like to learn more about. And don't forget any fun local food recommendations. Our email is theperfectbite at ccculv.com. Thank you for listening to this week's episode brought to you by Clark County Credit Union. For additional money management tips and financial calculators, check out our website at ccculv.org. Now that was the perfect bite.